Nuke 13.2 continues the steps made in the 13 series, with development of new workflows and tools, as well as updates to performance and UX, to help empower artists and give them the tools they need for more intuitive pipelines. With Nuke 13.2, we are continuing to improve the way artists interact with the 3D system in Nuke, and have extended the new control handles to the pivot point controls. This means users now have new pivot point rotations and improved handles, a new free rotate algorithm making free rotation of 3D objects in the viewer much easier, and pivot point match to selection, which allows users to quickly match the pivot position of your geometry to a vertex selection, making it much easier to precisely place pivot points. This work continues to build on our commitment to UX and performance improvements so that artists can work more intuitively and at greater speed. With this release, we're also introducing a new paradigm for rendering Nuke's node graph called top-down rendering. Top-down rendering inverts Nuke's classic rendering method and renders the graph node by node from the top of the graph down rather than scanline by scanline on demand. This allows Nuke to cache its data more efficiently and reduces thread synchronization issues for faster rendering. Because top-down renders the script node by node from the top of the graph down, Nuke's scanline by scanline progressive update to the viewer is replaced by the whole image updating at once. Our internal testing scripts render 20% faster on average, and some scripts render as much as 150% faster. In 13.2, Nuke will still default to rendering in the classic scanline mode, so to enable top-down rendering, you can change the render mode knob in your script project settings, set the Nuke top-down environment variable, or use the top-down flag when launching Nuke, giving you control as to when you want to tap into the potential performance benefits of top-down rendering. Users now have access to NDI inside of Nuke, as well as multiple monitor out support, allowing for even more expansive options when it comes to review. This builds on the 13 series improvements to monitor out, and with NDI, users can share video and metadata over the internet in real time, which means you can stream your Nuke viewer content to anyone else on your network. And when combined with the monitor out becoming a tab in the viewer control panel in the node graph, this means each viewer added can now have its own independent monitor out functionality, allowing for multiple floating windows and multiple NDI streams to be sent simultaneously. By giving users the ability to work with multiple viewer outputs, you can have greater control over how and what you share. And when combined with the new NDI feature, users can share multiple visual ideas at once, allowing for greater collaboration and feedback. Building on the introduction of the Unreal Reader in 13.1, we are introducing greater improvements to stability and usability to help support emerging new workflows. The UI has been refined to make navigating the node properties more intuitive, and there has been a stencil layer picking interface overhaul that utilizes a similar picker workflow to that of the Cryptomat node, with wildcard selection for a powerful way to create complex selections quickly. Under the hood, the Unreal Reader has had a full refactor, which has resolved many bugs while improving stability. We've also included environment variable support in the right section file knob, so that users can write to a shared network location, allowing for easier workflows when utilizing multiple machines running different operating systems. The Unreal Reader remains a beta feature for 13.2, but these developments continue to support new real-time workflows and help artists get the most out of their tools. The machine learning tools introduced in the 13 series have led to some unexpected and powerful workflows, and with 13.2, we have continued to improve these tools, enhancing the copycat node with faster training, support for multiple GPUs, and multi-channel training. With this update, we focused on leveraging more of your GPU power to make the most of your time. Now, not only single GPU training is up to 30% faster, but you can also take advantage of setups with multiple GPUs, enabling you to iterate quicker through your experiments. With these new changes, you can either speed up training by running Copycat on all your GPUs simultaneously, or run different training sessions on each GPU, allowing you to do more experiments at the same time. We've also removed any limitation on the number of training images and enabled the ability to train on headless nuke with the minus X flag. 
Furthermore, since data is one of the most important parts in machine learning, we want you to make the most out of your data. To do so, Copycat can now support more than four channels, exactly as many as your GPU and Nuke can handle, empowering you to train networks for a variety of more advanced use cases, or simply to avoid training similar networks over and over again by training one network to do multiple different use cases. With this release, your Copycat pipeline will be more streamlined, faster, and more powerful than ever before, helping to accelerate artists. To make working in episodic and complex projects even easier, as well as working collaboratively with Sync Review, we have reduced the time it takes to load timeline projects by an average of 60% and up to 95% compared to 13.0. Those starting a new project in 13.2 will immediately see these benefits, but for those bringing a project up to 13.2, you will have to first load an older project, save it, and from that point forward, you will see the increased performance. We know how important it is for the software to get out of your way when you have a job to do, and we will be continuing to focus on performance across all aspects of the Nuke family to help artists get to the final image quicker. For users working between multiple timeline tools, there is now support for non-linear dissolves in Nuke Studio and Hero, making importing projects even more seamless and giving you the ability to visualize and modify these transitions as keyframes in the curve editor. Looking ahead, we want to continue pursuing more seamless workflows for sharing and managing your project data, and with that in mind, are introducing Open Timeline IO functionality to the timeline as a beta feature. OTIO is an API interchange format for editorial cut information and includes an API for reading, writing, and manipulating data. Combining this with the previous work done on metadata management, we are developing tools which aim to create a single space for you to manage the flow of all your project data. As a beta feature, this is just the start and will support the import and export of clips, tracks, transitions, and linear retimes in OTIO edits. But like with the Unreal Reader, Copycat, or the 3D UX tools, we will continue to develop on this tool to introduce new workflows for artists. Supporting the libraries and SDK updates you rely on is a focus for each release, and for 13.2, we are including file format and SDK updates for RE 7.0 to allow reading of the new RE S35 4K files, Blackmagic RAW 2.2 support, as well as Arja updates in the Monitor Out tab. Apple M1 has also been tested on Rosetta emulation to ensure new functionality runs as expected on M1 hardware. Nuke 13.2 combines innovative tech and trusted features to bring you full control over your work. Thanks to everyone who helped us build these tools and to all artists using Nuke. Happy comping.